one on the right shoots you through the roof. Good evening. <laughs> Good evening, and welcome to the regular scheduled meeting of the Mayor and Borough Council. We will start the evening by opening the Open Public Meetings Act. I hereby announce a request that such be included in the minutes of this meeting, that notice of the time, date, and place of this meeting has been prominently posted on the bulletin board at Borough Hall, mailed to the Times, the Star-Ledger, the Courier News, the Alternative Press by January 10th, 2018, filed with the Borough Clerk, and mailed to any person requesting the same in accordance of the Open Public Meetings Act. Uh, I'd like for everyone that is here to please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I would ask that you remain standing where we have a moment of silence and that I would ask that we keep all of those students um, that were senselessly killed in the Parkland shootings down in Florida and we keep the students um, in our minds across the United States. Thank you. May I have a uh, roll call, please? Present. Present. Here. 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 Um, we'll start tonight's meeting off by doing a review, review and approval of minutes of the meetings that the mayor and council has had. We had a regular scheduled meeting uh, this time last month, February 20th, 2018, and we had an agenda meeting two weeks ago on March 5th, 2018. I have a motion, please. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Um, we start off our meetings uh, with appointments and proclamations and announcements. And I'd like to go to the podium uh, with Councilman Carter um, as we do our March 2018 Volunteer of the Month. So for those of you who are in the audience this evening and for those of you who are watching us from home, um, I want to just say thank you for tuning in and uh, showing up and being part of our uh, monthly meetings. We started meeting off with uh, drawing a little attention to um, a special Fanwood resident uh, that we believe has gone above and beyond the call of duty, so to speak, in their duties to the borough of Fanwood. Um, Fanwood is really the special town that it is because of our volunteers and for the last several years every month um, we really feel passionate about thanking people who step forward and really are a part of sort of the behind the scenes of everything that makes this town as wonderful as it is um, and this month our volunteer of the month is uh, Mike Kelly and if Mike would like to come forward please I, I asked Councilman Carter to join me up here on the podium because prior to being elected uh, as a councilman, Anthony has been an integral part of the Recreation Commission and has really sat really right next to and been uh, worked very closely with Mike Kelly and I thought it would be appropriate that he comes up here uh, this evening. You know, Mike has been an extremely strong advocate for improving recreational facilities um, and services for all of our residents of Fanwood. And Mike has taken a really active role in the planning of all the major improvements that have occurred in Fanwood's parks in the recent years. He is also the treasurer of the Recreation Commission. He has modernized the presentation of financial information presented to his commissioners while keeping a close watch on the budget. But perhaps his most important role while serving on the commission has been he is a true volunteer and he is the face that you see so many at our townwide events that recreation stages every year. Michael has a real enthusiasm for and a dedication to helping out at all these events and the services and entertainment that they provide the people of Fanwood. And he serves as a real great example to all of our residents about what really community service is all about. 
Um, we want to thank Mike uh, for, for coming here tonight, and I'd like Anthony to please you want to say a few words. <laughs> I second everything the mayor has just stated. <laughs> <laughs> I promise not to take Mike's time today, so without further ado, here's Mike Kelly, my guy. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Anthony. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council. Uh, first, I'd like to thank my wife, Mary, uh, for allowing me to spend some time and, and do the Recreation Commission. Um, we lived in town a long time. I was reminiscing with uh, Jack, with the, the mayors here. We moved in, I think, when Patricia Curran was mayor. Uh -huh. We've been here that long. Uh, also, didn't know that my daughter's name is actually on the plaque at the back here for the Scholar, scholar oh, of the sure. Year. Although we discovered her name was spelled wrong. Oh no, Eleanor. <laughs> <Alan. laughs> I appreciate the recognition. There's probably more some. There's probably some more deserving people than I, but uh, uh, I enjoy the time that I spent with the commissioners and, and trying to help the town improve with the parks. Well, you do. So, um, so for those at home and those who are here, uh, we give out our framed picture of our train station to our volunteers of the month. You know, when we think of Fanwood, a lot of people know the train station. They look at that as being something very significant in our community. So we thought that it is only fitting uh, that we, we give this to our volunteer of the month so that when you hang it in your house, um, you take a look at it and you know that all the work that you've done and all the dedication and the time that you've spent away um, has not gone unnoticed. And we really thank you so much, Mike. Thank you. You're kidding. We bought a similar Oh, you may have one of your own. That's awesome. Well, I didn't draw it here. Right. Well, you are. It's nice. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. So as we talk about our uh, community service and really what makes our, you know, our town so special, it's about giving back. Um, and it's about giving back really just because it, it produces something inside of you that you say, I want to stand up and get involved. And this month um, is Women's History Month. And what I think is really um, appropriate and interesting at the same time that it is Women's History Month is that it is also Girl Scout Week. Um, so before I uh, speak anymore, I'd like to call forward Julie Murphy um, and our, our young girls from both Troop 40370 and 40777. <laughs> So, welcome girls. Good to see you. I'm glad that you could come and your parents could bring you here. So, before we get into the, uh, the Girl Scout Week and they have a little presentation, I thought it, it, would, it should be acknowledged again that this is Women's History Month and that every month, every March I should say, we celebrate women. And in 1987, it was designated as a special opportunity in our schools, in our communities, and in our workplace to recognize and to celebrate sometimes the often overlooked achievements of American women. And there's always a theme that they have. And this year, the theme for the Women's Month is Nevertheless She Persisted, Honoring Women Who Fight All Forms of Discrimination Against Women. And so, I think it's really appropriate that the Girl Scouts are here in March to talk to us about what it means to be a Girl Scout and the history of being a Girl Scout while we're also celebrating strong women across the United States. Um, so this is Girl Scout Week and we celebrate Girl Scout Week from March 11th to March 17th. And this year marks the 106th anniversary of being Girl Scouts as designated by Girl Scouts USA, which was founded in 1912. And the mission of the Girl Scouts in the United States is to build girls' courage, 
build girls' confidence and build girls' character. And that that will make the world a much better place with all these strong girls all around us. And throughout its long and distinguished history, the Girl Scouts has inspired millions of girls and women to strive for the highest ideal of character, content, conduct, and patriotism. And through the Girl Scouts, girls grow strong, they gain self-confidence, they develop leadership skills, and they learn lifelong lessons as well as making lifelong friends. So it is um, very happy that myself and the council can celebrate March 11th through the 17th um, as Girl Scout Week. So Julie, do you want to say a few words, please? Sure. Introduce yourself, okay? Thank you, Mayor. My name is Juliana Abontas. It's been 106 years since Juliet Lowe held the first Girl Scout meeting in Savannah, Georgia, with 18 girls. Today, there are 2.6 million Girl Scouts, including 1.8 million girls and 800,000 adults, who are mostly volunteers. Here in Fanwood Scotch Plains, we have 795 Girl Scouts and 86 troops from kindergarten to high school, including 26 graduating 12th graders. We also have 369 adults, volunteers, as our leaders. Since 1912, Girl Scouts have worked to improve their communities, and here are some of the ways we have helped in Fanwood and Scotch Plains this year. I am Presley. We've collected a whole lot of food for the state Bartholomew Food Pantry, made, in Hall made Halloween treat bags for, her for human humanity, and made welcome home backpacks for people recently released from prison. If you were at Martin Luther King Day of service, you, uh, you saw lots of Girl Scouts running events and participating in projects. My name is Carly. Recently, Girl Scouts, Girl Scout Bronze Award projects include making toiletry bags for homeless, for the homeless, making chew, chew toys for an animal shelter, and painting ban benches for the school one. And again, re recent Girl Scout Silver Awards projects include recording books on CDs for children, specialized hospitals and teaching stress relief workshops for kids and dance using dance, art, drama, and music. Girl Scout Gold Award projects in 2017 include starting the first Fanwood Green Fair and ma making signs for the whole website about the plants and the animals at the Fanwood Nature Center. I'm Jasmine. We would also like to thank our neighbors for ordering more than More than, we would also like to thank our neighbors for ordering more than 48,000 boxes of Girl Scout cookies, which are now being delivered. If you didn't get a chance to order any, look for our cookie sales booths around town, now through April 22nd. While selling cookies, we learn business and people skills, which will help us in the future. My name is Rosie. Thank you for the pr proclamation. We'll keep work. We'll keep working to keep Fanwood a great place to live, and we'll see you in the Memorial Day parade. Awesome. Thank you very much. We love it. We love our Girl Scout cookies here, don't yes, we? Yes, we do. We love our Girl Scouts here. So I'm not sure if everybody got their Girl Scout cookies here, so we'll have to watch out for everybody around town, right, guys? Yes. Yeah. Around town. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of, yes, I agree with it. So let's give these girls, these awesome, strong girls, for coming out here tonight and talking in front of the camera to all the thousands of people that are watching this in our community. Let's give them another round of applause.
Julie Murphy from the Fanwood Scotch Plains Girl Scout Service Team, and thank you, Mayor. And if you'd like to find cookie booths, you can go on the Council's website, gshnj.org, which stands for Heart of New Jersey, Girl Scouts Heart of New Jersey. And there's a button that says Cookie Finder, and you put in your zip code, and it'll tell you where there's a cookie booth near you. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Here's your proclamation. And thank you again. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you, girls. Oh, are they the new ones? I think so. I think it's their second year. S'mores. The second year, the second year of s'mores. S'mores. Oh, so okay. I don't know that okay. one with the caramel. So, okay. So, um, I guess about a week ago, right? We had a uh, a surprise birthday party for one of our uh, most beloved uh, volunteers, Joe Nagy, and it, he was 95. So Joe Nagy is, if you don't know Joe Nagy, you would know him if you saw him, but um, he was part of the founding of our television station, which you're watching um, from home on this, um, and he has been part of our community for decades, and he is our town historian, and so we threw him uh, a surprise birthday party with our Historic Preservation Commission at the Carriage House, and it was safe to say for those of us who attended that he was truly, truly uh, surprised um, and sent, I think, a lot of us a, a nice thank you note, which I think we all have received. Uh, so we have a resolution uh, for him. Let's see. Um, Youth Art Month. I think uh, Councilwoman, I could ask you to read that into the record, please. You did. So in honor of Youth Art Month, which is March 2018, whereas art education contributes powerful educational benefits to all elementary, middle, and secondary students, including the following. Art education develops students' creative, problem-solving, and cre critical thinking abilities. Art education teaches sensitivity to beauty, order, and other expressive qualities. Art education gives students a deeper understanding of multicultural values and beliefs. Art education reinforces and brings to life what students learn in other subjects. And art education interrelates student learning in art production, art history, art criticism, and aesthetics. Whereas our national leaders have acknowledged the necessity of including art experiences in all students' education. Now, therefore, I, Colleen Mark, Mayor of the Borough of Fanwood, do hereby proclaim March 2018 Youth Art Month in the Borough of Fanwood and encourage the support of quality school art programs for children and youth. Thank you uh, very much for that. And we'll have our last proclamation for Red Cross Month. I've asked our own resident nurse, Kathy Mitchell. That's, that's my name. Okay, this is a proclamation, Red Cross Month, March of 2018. The American Red Cross saw a record-breaking year in 2017 of challenging domestic and international response efforts. Through the support of volunteers, in just 45 days, the Red Cross responded to six of the largest and most complex disasters in 2017, including back-to-back -back hurricanes, the deadliest week of wildfires in California history, the horrific mass shooting in Las Vegas. In addition, the Red Cross responded to nearly 50,000 homes, home fires in 2017 providing casework assistance to help 76,000 families recover. That's a lot of people. In New Jersey, the Red Cross has a long history of helping our neighbors in need. The Red Cross New Jersey region responded to more than 820 local disasters last year, assisting nearly 1,900 New Jersey families who were displaced by home fires. They installed 10,600 free smoke alarms and reached thousands with fire safety information through the home fire campaign. In New Jersey, the Red Cross provides an average of 4,000 military families case services every year and collects an average of 90,000 units of blood from generous donors. 
March is American Red Cross Month, a special time to recognize and thank the Red Cross volunteers and donors who give of their time and resources to help members of the community. The Red Cross depends on those heroes to deliver help and hope during the disaster. We applaud our heroes here in New Jersey who give themselves to assist their neighbors when, in, when they are in need. And across the country and around the world, the Red Cross responds to disasters big and small. It collects about 40% of the nation's blood supply, provides 24-hour support to military families, veterans and their families, teaches millions life-saving skills such as lifeguarding and CPR, and through its Restoring Family Links program, connects family members separated by crisis, conflict, or immigration. Whereas we decided we dedicate the month of March to all those who support the American Red Cross mission to prevent and alleviate human suffering in the face of emergencies. Our community depends on the American Red Cross, which relies on donations of time, money, and blood to fill its humanitarian mission. Therefore, Colleen Marr, the, the mayor of the borough of Fanwood, does hereby proclaim March 2018 as American Red Cross Month and encourage all Americans to support this organization and its noble humanitarian mission. Thank you very much. They do do good work. Yes, they do. <laughs> Thank you. Um, next, we have a presentation of communications and referral. We have um, Fanwood recently received uh, word at the end of February that we'll be receiving $400,000 worth of a NJDOT uh, grant from our municipal aid program, where the $400,000 will go to two roads that we have identified this year. Um, remind me, what are the two roads? Patterson and Ginder. I thought Stewart. 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 Stewart, yes. Stewart and Ginder. Stewart. Patterson. Patterson and is now. All the people who live on Stewart. Patterson and like Stewart. So we're sorry for that. Um, and we are very pleased to receive that. Um, so then I would like to just uh, have a motion to move the presentation of communications as noted. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, moving on to Councilman Krantz, uh, who is the head of our administration and finance. Are there any updates? Thanks, Mayor. Uh, I have the tax collector's report first off for the month of February. We took in $2,541,875 and change uh, for a year to date total of $7,020,542.91. Um, I, uh, I have a motion. Second. I have a second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Did you have anything Get else? To that. Uh, just two other things. Um, we are in the midst of having meetings about the 2018 operating budget. Uh, we had uh, a, a Sunday meeting. Um, that was fun. And uh, we're going to schedule at least one more, maybe two more. We. You know, this year, as I mentioned last meeting, we've got um, significant shortfalls that we're trying to figure out um, how to how to fill without increasing our burden on taxpayers here. And we've got a couple of resolutions coming up that will address that uh, partially and also address our increasing costs. Uh, so we'll have more of that as we go along. Uh, and I just wanted to mention, I mentioned also last time that the, the online survey we did about Fanwood Television. First of all, I, I was informed over the weekend that all of the Fios and Comcast problems have been um, fixed by both those companies that actually was their equipment that, that was either installed incorrectly or had gone out of calibration. Our TV consultant, Ed, spent pretty much the entire day here Saturday, and I'm told by my uh, faithful assistant, uh, my wife, who was watching us on Fios, that we, we actually are we're looking good and we're sounding good. So that's good, and we're going to continue figuring out what our town really wants in terms of Fanwood TV. Um, we had about 100 responses to the survey, and I'm going to bring the report back next month when I finally get around to collating those results. And that's all I have. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Councilman Carter, you want to bring us up to date on, on your public safety? Yes, thank you. for the month of February, uh, reported by Chief Trigo on March 5th, 2018.
total calls for police assistance through our CAD system, 1,103. Total calls for police assistance through the 911 terminal, 12. Motor vehicle stops for various violations, 462. The total number of summonses issued during those stops, 440. Motor vehicle moving violation summonses, 117. Non-moving violations, 235. Parking summonses, 82. And two DWIs. The total adult arrest, 17. Arrest on warrants, 15. DWI, two. Our total juvenile arrests, thankfully zero. Total crimes reported, 11. They were thefts or larceny, one, fraud, six, burglary, one, and harassment, three. And that concludes my report for the month of February. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Council Mueller? Or I can go. Oh. Council Mueller. Council President Mueller. He's got nothing. <laughs> I think, Russ, when you sit here in this seat, that's what happens. I know. You, you've told me this. I know. And I, I didn't believe you, but now I understand. Six times she skipped over me. I know. When I occupied that seat. I know. Well, this is number one in counting. One time I hit under the desk. <laughs> then she called up. <laughs> I'll try that next time. Okay. Uh, public Works. Uh, public Works has been busy because um, we've all been busy. And, and just because, you know, we think we're not busy enough. We're gonna get you, get you another snowstorm coming, you know, 10, 11 inches. So it Come will on. will be a plowable event. Uh, it's a they're calling for 11 inches. <laughs> That's not what I read today. Well, I'm hearing uh, around me, they're saying it's alternative facts, it but you know, um, <laughs> anyway, so we are planning for the worst because that's what you do. And uh, so public works will be ready. Obviously, there, a lot of you have put out branches, mm. and that will get snow on top of that. So um, yeah, it's a lot of. It's, it's been an interesting month uh, for public works after having a fairly easy winter. Uh, it's they came back. To, winter came back to remind us that it was still here. So um, sorry about that. Uh, when you put out brush, it's always helpful to keep them in small as cuts as possible. It eases with our pickup. We always request nothing larger than four feet, but obviously uh, this past storm was a unique situation. But if you can possibly do that, that's really helpful to our public work staff and it makes the whole process go faster. So anything you can do to help that, it's always appreciated here and by our borough employees. Other than doing all that, they also did some painting of the rear section of the Forest Road Park building. Uh, they also filled in some potholes, Russ. They didn't say how much tons, but they filled in some potholes at the Municipal Complex driveway, Madison and Willow Avenues, Patterson Road, Birchwood Terrace, Walden Road, Nichols Court, Sun Valley Way, Woodland Avenue, Estelle Lane, and Wood Woodruff Place. So, uh, Sounds about like 1210. Uh, no, not right now, but oh, we do have a, a thing online where you could do that for us. Oh, okay. Sounds like it's yeah, 12 Yeah, you can tons. send us a request. There's a request. Um, you can send us an email, and you can shoot a picture of it, too, and uh, we'll get on top of that. Uh, so with that, uh, please try to keep the streets clear, and that's, public, that's our public works department, but uh, fire, the fire department had 24 calls this month, two motor vehicle accidents, and three mutual aid calls. Uh, during the nor'easter on March 7th, the fire department responded to over 55 storm-related calls. So uh, they were busy as well as everyone else in uh, Fanwood, the police, the rescue squad, the fire department. It was uh, Clint Dixon is our public works director, and after that storm, uh, he sent me a text of saying, well, that was not fun, was the only thing he told me. And I asked him, I said, well, was that, that kind of was like Sandy but with snow. And he said, yes, exactly. So that's, uh, it wasn't fun for them to be plowing snow while lines and trees were falling down all around them. So that was a, a tough storm for them. Uh, 
public, uh, our engineering department, our public works, we're working on um, new sidewalks and there will be uh, Madison Avenue will be going to construction this year and that will be sidewalks and fully constructed road with sidewalk. We're looking to also put in a sidewalk on North Avenue from the quick check up to where North and Midway splits. And we're also looking to construct a sidewalk uh, along Terrell that's missing pieces between Mary Lane and Patterson. So this is all in our effort to uh, make it safer to walk around uh, the borough and it's our complete street. So if someone wants to walk, it's safe to walk and encouraging people to walk when they can. So with that, that's public work for tonight. Um, thank you. I think I will just piggyback on what you said about a special acknowledgement and thank you to all of our emergency services. Um, they were actually referring to it as almost like a mini Sandy, um, where we actually had a significant amount of damage. We probably have about five homes that um, I believe are uninhabitable still uh, because of trees that actually sort of fell into or through the houses. Um, we had hundreds and hundreds of houses that were without power, uh, some for days. So I want to personally thank the police department, the public works, our fire, and our rescue squad. Um, I want to thank our residents who once again uh, made sure that their neighbors, whether they be elderly or people that live by themselves, were okay. Um, I want to thank uh, Tom Kranz for helping keeping our lines of communication <coughs> open. And for those of you who have not signed up for our e-blast, I would strongly encourage you to go to our website to sign up because it becomes a critical way that we communicate to you um, during trying times as that uh, nor'easter was and we will continue to do so if we actually get hit with as much snow as they are predicting because we have a tremendous amount of uh, twigs and branches on the ground and we still have snow that's on the ground. Um, now Councilman Yugel. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, historic preservation I attended the meeting on March 1st and uh, photo swap so they're planning on doing this event at the train station it probably will not happen until the fall where they do a photo swap they'll have equipment there where people can trade photos and they'll scan them and copy them um, the idea being that you may go there you may look at one of the photos and say hey, that's my 1967 Camaro in that photo. I want that. I never never took a picture of my car. So that's one of the ideas behind it. So it's old photos of Fanwood um, so people could swap those memories. So they're in the process of getting that together. The third grade tour of the museum will occur again, as it usually does in either May or June. Um, they're going to do the antique roadshow thing again there. Oh, I know you made a lot of money off of that the last that last time that they had that so uh, uh, <laughs> I had something really valuable <laughs> she looked in a garage she was like oh my gosh uh, the building subcommittee they are I'm not, I'm not sure many people are aware they're planning on redoing the plaza in front of the train station so they're currently looking at preliminary drawings uh, they're getting they want to get rid of the old wooden porch I guess it's, yeah, it's really was an add-on after the fact, so nobody's really attached to it. So um, they're in the process of looking over drawings. And last but not least, one of the things, I I'm swear I'm being serious about this. I know you think I'm going to be kidding, but April 1st, the museum is closed. So the museum will be closed on April 1st. I know everybody out there thinks I'm kidding, but I'm being serious because it's Easter Sunday, so. And it's also April Fool's Day, but it will be closed. Thank you very much. <laughs> Councilwoman Barker? Yeah, I don't know if I can follow that, but I'll try. <coughs> um, so I actually did not attend the Rec Commission meeting <laughs> this past month. I don't need to, thank you. Um, uh, Councilman Carter went in my place. But what I do know, and then you can add anything that I missed out on um is that most importantly the easter egg hunt is this weekend on saturday the 24th the hunt starts exactly at 10. It's so please cold. arrive before 10 and park your it's car and walk to the park one, right? because yes. it's over as soon as it starts checking, so checking the weather um 
And we're going to be patrolling the prize box a little bit better this year. But it will be this Saturday at 10 in Forest Road Park. It will start exactly at 10. And if you are late, you will make your children cry. Um, and Bundle up. It's true. And uh, oh, and the other degrees. very important thing is that um, all of the um, summer programming is open for registration. That's the day camp as well as the tween and teen travel camp, which filled up, went into a wait list, and had to have a week added last year. I don't know if they can always do that. So if you haven't yet registered your kids for the summer park um, camp, the <coughs> grand camp, or the tween camp, and you're thinking about doing that, I would recommend that you register quickly um, and get your spots uh, however also uh, don't lose heart get put yourself on the wait list you never know what happens people's plans change um, I don't know we are we are moving forward with um, getting the architects to uh, drop official plans for the next phase of the Forest Road Park um, renovation which is sort of the big one so um, that's exciting but that's not uh, much to talk about yet and that's all I have from REC. I don't know, uh, Councilman Carter, if you have anything else. You covered it. Oh, is, is and I wasn't even. Is that the code name for it, the big one? Thank you. <laughs> What's that? Is that the code name for it, the, the big, big one? The big one, yes. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's actually only phase one. But it's Councilwoman Mitchell. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I won't pick on you. The way the other two are on the other side. I was picking on Our poetry series will be tomorrow night. Um, and I don't know if everybody knows this, but other than the, they always have uh, a renowned poet, renowned in the poetry field, but if you are an aspiring poet here in Fanwood, you, there is always an open reading after, after the performance of the, of the established poet. So um, maybe that will encourage some more people to attend the poetry series. And it's over in the carriage house, right across on the other side of this building, tomorrow evening at, eight o'clock. Uh, let me see. Um, the rescue squad. I do have a report <coughs> here, but I do want to tell you that we, I don't remember whether we said this last month or not, we do have a new ambulance. It's not in service yet. They are waiting for an in-service and for radios to be installed. Um, they are in the process of getting uh, estimates for um, the dis disposal of the ambulance. Um, that the, the extra ambulance now. So uh, they think that by next month the new ambulance will be up and running. And I do have the um, captain's report for February. They res there were 82 calls, um, sick persons 25, uh, cardiac, CVA, respiratory 16, trauma 12, falls 12. And I understand that most of those are um, at the Chelsea. Uh, there were other one, uh, medical alarms went off once, maternity one once, they transported somebody one time. Most of the people that they had to take to the hospital went to Overlook. Um, they had an insu insufficient crew 12 times only. That, that number has gone down quite a bit since, uh, as I reported last month, um, we have uh, some young people who are allowed to drive now, thanks to um, Tom Kranz, who was out there teaching them how to drive the ambulance. So, let me see, they needed oxygen seven times, and they did mutual aid to Scotch Plains 39 times. That's, that's a lot. Garwood once, Summit once, Westfield once. Um, and they, were on, they were at the uh, Go Red for Women at the Chelsea. They were most of the time uh, in, in the uh, rescue squad building during both of the storms. And they apparently have three new members this month, which is a good thing. And that's it for, I think that's it for the rescue squad. The Environmental Commission is um, having a pro an in-service program this Saturday at the Carriage House. And they are going to be talking about uh, what plants and that you can plant to encourage butterflies and bees and um, good bugs. So uh, it's it it is free. Um, so hopefully, if we don't have a if the snowstorm is gone by then, we will uh, it will be a very informative uh, session. So if um, 
we're just beginning to think about getting gardens going and preparing the soil and all that sort of stuff. So it will be uh, an informative um, session, and it will be from 3 to 4 at the Carriage House this Saturday. What about the, the minute? What Pardon? about the ministerium? Pardon? What about the ministerium? What about? It? Did you did you go? Did, yes, did I you did. meet? You did. did what you about it? Me? Did you want to hear that? Yeah. <laughs> it's not in my notes, but I will, I will paraphrase it for you, Russ. <laughs> I'm paying. Jobs here at Councilman Hugo, or what? <laughs> I'm keeping her on her toes. I'm you know I'm paying attention. Thank you. Thank you. Sometimes I don't think any, everybody does, but thank you very much. I know you do. The minister let, let, met last Thursday at Family Press, okay. and we talked about um, the National Night of Prayers, which will be the first Thursday in May. Um, it will probably be either at the Family Press or at the... Yes, there. <laughs> the Garden of the of where right. the monks are. Right. Yes. I don't know how to pronounce the name of it. Mayor. Damakayama Center. There. Okay, now let me see. Uh, the performance series it will be back starting in um, next Saturday the thirty first at seven o'clock. Um, I have been telling you all these years that most of the majority of the town is local. However, in speaking with um, the people who run the series, there are people from all over the country who are sending in resumes because I guess our performance series is getting a real reputation. So we're glad to hear about that. And I think, oh, oh, the seniors. Last Monday, the seniors met and um, we celebrated the birthday of Laura Testa, who was 103 years old. Oh, my. Oh, my. Yeah. She looks great. She, she, she looks wonderful, doesn't she? looks great. She made all the papers. She wow. looks wonderful. And Tom was there to um, take pictures. That was her paparazzi. Absolutely. Yep. It's great. And, uh, of course, we had a nice birthday cake and sang happy birthday. And she was thrilled, and everybody else was thrilled. And I don't know what her secret is, because she wouldn't tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, uh, just a couple add-ons. Um, this Saturday um, at 10 o'clock, there will be a, a, a county-wide march for our lives, um, which this is a, uh, a march that Union County students have um, organized and they are billing it as not an anti-gun march but an anti-gun violence march and they are meeting at 10 o'clock at the Burnett Middle School in Union and then marching to uh, City Hall in, in Union. Um, we are also wanting to make sure that our annual Rockin' for Autism is coming up which is on April 14th and that is a really um, great day uh, which the Banks family uh, really takes the lead on and uh, drawing attention to and raising funds for children with autism and we have partnered up with the Scotch Plains Family Youth Baseball Association and that is opening day at Le Grand Park so I would ask the council to make sure that they put April 14th uh, in the morning uh, for our Rockin' for Autism. We welcome uh, a new business that has opened up. The Shillings Fish Market um, has done their soft opening um, on South Avenue. They'll be doing a ribbon cutting, I think, later this month or next month in April. But if you haven't stopped in, um, the place is really nice, and they've got a great array of raw fish and as, also as prepared seafood uh, meals, which are uh, very good. We know that our... Um, we're sending out once again, as we did last year, an events postcard. We really believe that we have created such a array of cultural um, 
recreational and special events in town that sometimes it's hard to keep up with all of them so we send out a postcard we did it the first time last year we got a great response and so that should be in your mailbox shortly and it's a great thing just to keep on your fridge and to keep track of all the street fairs and things that go on from now until the end of the year so we want to thank everyone um, that actually has a hand in putting that together all right, moving on, do we have any special committee reports? Seeing that there isn't any. Um, we can do the presentation of claims, Councilman Krantz. Sure, Mayor, uh, I'd like to move uh, that we pay claims in the amount of $3,824,346.46, having been listed on the bill list and recorded in the files of the Borough Hall and approved by the Chairman of the appropriate committee. Second. I have a second, may have a roll call please for the payment of claims? Yes. 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 Thank you. We have uh, under auditing of claims by resolution no action needed on that. Um, and now I would like to have a motion to open the meeting to the public for agenda items. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'd like to call forward any members of the public that wish to come forward at this point to talk to us. Seeing that there isn't anyone, may I have a motion to close the meeting to the public? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Um, I also just forgot to mention that Fanwood um, has received a, a grant from the County of Union through a new gr grant program called Level the Playing Field. And this was a new grant in which um, <coughs> the county uh, gave out grant money to all the 21 municipalities, which will go directly to improve playground access for children and families with disabilities. So the Recreation Commission will be uh, tasked with, I think it's about a fourteen dollars to $15,000 grant that will go towards purchasing a piece of equipment um, that uh, we will put into the park to enhance our playgrounds for children and families with disabilities. So that's a nice way to start off our almost could be spring. Um, moving on, we have no old business. Um, we have nothing on the consent agenda so we'll jump right into our new business which I will look to Councilman Krantz to move okay thanks mayor um, first I move resolution 180349 which authorizes the refund of duplicate tax payments as I understand it these are folks who basically because they paid early uh, they were charged a second time as, uh, uh, so these are people who are basically being refunded who are basically charged for their tax payments. Second. Payment. I'll second that. Can I have a roll call, please? Yes. Yes, to return the money. Anthony Carter? Yes. 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 I move resolution 180350. This awards um, a contract for appraisal services to appraisal associates for an amount not to exceed five thousand dollars. Second. What is this for? Yes. What is this for? What is this for, Mrs. McGovern? It's for appraisal. It's for appraisal services to corporate. So what are they appraising? Oh, well, this is just this is the real estate. This no. is the appeals. Oh, the tax appeals. Right, 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 tax right, appeals. Right. Okay. Okay. Sorry, I wasn't sure of that. All right. So I needed a uh, motion. I have a second. May I have a roll call, please? Okay. Yes. 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 I move resolution 180351, which authorizes transfers from uh, one set of accounts to others uh, from the 2017 budget to pay some bills this year. Second. May I have a roll call, please? Yes. 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 I move resolution 180352. This amends our contract with our grant writer, Millennium Strategies. Uh, this increases their contract from twenty thousand to thirty-five thousand dollars. Do we know? Is there a specific thing that they're that we're paying for here? Do you have? Uh, well, uh, it's uh, they would charge us for the time that they spent in doing the grants that they submitted. Right. This time it's not. It's just. It's just a, a, it's just a monthly retainer. retainer. Got it. Uh, I'll second the resolution. 
Yes. 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 I move resolution 1803-53. This authorizes the mayor to sign uh, an inventory of recreation and open space uh, items, I guess, for the Green Acres grants. Second. Okay. Roll call, please. Yes. 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 And I move a resolution 1803-54. This is an emergency appropriation, it looks to me like, as a result of our storms, our earlier storms, uh, to appropriate $30,000 to M&A Tree Service basically for removing branches that blocked our roads. That's what it boils down to right now. Second. I may have a uh, roll call, please. Yes. 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 Move resolution 1803-62, temporary emergency appropriations uh, to pay bills and salaries coming up um, that's it. Second. May I have a roll call, please? Yes. 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 I move resolution 1803-63-63. Um, this raises the parking rates at our train station approximately, I think it's 10% over what people are paying now. Residents. Family residents will not pay $407 for that permit. Non-residents will pay $743 for that permit. Okay. Second. Okay. Second. Okay. May I have a roll call, please? Yes. <coughs> yes. 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 I move resolution 1803-64. This uh, establishes a new fee for our bulk pickup in September. The current fee which is, I think, where it's been since the beginning, right? $65 per household uh, is being raised to $85 uh, per household with a special rate for seniors of $70 per household. Second. Second. Uh, May I have a uh, roll call, please? Yes. 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 I introduce ordinance number 1801S and request the title uh, to be read by the clerk. Calendar year 2018, model ordinance to exceed the municipal budget appropriation and to establish a path to the I move that ordinance 1801S be adopted on the first reading, and if adopted, that the clerk advertise the ordinance as required by law, and that the second reading of said ordinance be held at a public hearing here in Borough Hall, 75 North Martin Avenue in Fanwood. On April 2nd, 2018, at 7 p.m., or as soon thereafter as the matter can be heard. Um, before I, um, I just I make, if I could ask my uh, council, my ANF president, chairman emeritus Russ Hugel, to just summarize what this is. This sets up the cap bank, correct? Yes. Thank you, thank you for that explanation. Wow. Really? This is something we do every. Yeah, right, we do this no. every year, but this is my first. My you first time yes around no the track. So. No, he so actually asked an adult you to explain this to me. Oh, he did. He did. No, we do this every year. It creates a cap bank. Where there's a certain amount that we have to set aside for a surplus for the following year. Right. The, uh, it's, it's, uh, our cap is 2.5%. 2, 2. Right. If we don't pass this ordinance and something happens, an emergency right. or something, we won't have any money to take care of. Right. This allows us to do that. We like do the trees, for most, example. Most yeah, most we, we, don't it. Touch no, it. we don't even touch it. We just it. Right. And it drops into a, a, a bank so that we can use it in the next two years. Right. And some of it, it expires. There's an expiration date on some of this surplus, right, two years. If you don't use it, then it goes away and you can never use it ever again. So. Got it. Thank you. That was really helpful. <laughs> <laughs> next year I'll know. Okay, so we had... <laughs> Where are we with that? We uh, introduced it. You had a second. Are all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Is that your last one? That yep. is the All right. I, I have one question. Um, with resolution 1803-49, which is the duplicate payments, 
did, did something happen with the system? Because I mean, we we, I mean, no, we, we never have this. Any. No, well, that's because that's because they were allowed to prepay. That's all prepayments to go this back to that. Yes, yeah. yeah, and what happens? Some, sometimes the residents paid by themselves online, mm -hmm. whatever. And then the, the mortgage company, whoever does their mortgage, takes oh, it. Oh, so this was really out. as a result of 1231 yes. I guess the, the mortgage the year. companies didn't necessarily know they prepaid, no, right. so they just continued to Got deduct. Got it, because normally we have like two. Right. Not like, not like 30 that. or 50. Okay, thank you very much for that. Okay, moving on under public safety. Safety, Anthony Carter, Councilman Carter, you have one resolution to move, please. I move resolution 13-03-55. It's supposed to be 18, 18, but it says 13. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm looking at the sheet. It's a typo. It should be 18 or 3. Move, re move resolution 18-03. Dash 55, an in grade promotion for Patrolman Thomas Chisholm. Second. April. Oh, sorry. April 1st, 2018. Second. Because I remember interviewing Patrolman Chisholm. He's turned into a fine officer, I understand. Yes, he has. So we have a second on that. May we have a roll call, please? It's in the contract. Okay, all right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Um, Councilman Molinar, moving on. Move resolution 180356. This is award a contract to MA Tree Service for a tree trimming around the borough. They they were the um, the lowest aggregate bidder. Second. Second, may I have a roll call, please? Bless you. Yes. 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 Move uh, resolution 1803-57. This is to purchase a dump truck. From we're now a member of the Morris County Cooperative Pricing Council, and which gives us uh, some good prices on trucks. So this is to buy a dump truck. Second. This was from 2017, and this was part of their capital uh, improvement plan. So this is um, yes. Yes. So yes. this was money that was put aside in last year's budget. Cool. Okay. Dump truck is a yes. Um, I have a second on that. May I have a roll call? Yes. 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 Now move resolution eighteen oh three fifty eight for uh, for. Um, change order to finish out the popular place project which also allowed us to put in some extra curbing on shady lane so it's a decrease though it's a decrease yes mm -hmm. okay because normally change orders are a increase so it's nice to actually have a change order that's an overall decrease to just finalize it out yep so i have a may I have a second did i have a second yeah second. Second. okay may I have a roll call please making money tonight. yes yeah. Yes. 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 Move resolution 180359 to award a contract to TM Associates to prepare a downtown parking map because parking is hard to find in our downtown. Well, that's because we don't have the map yet. Right. Right. That's because we don't have the map. Which will actually go up onto the website, and we will be. Able, I mean, that's where it's going. I mean, just so that you know, act like we're all knocking into each other trying to find a parking spot. So you couldn't find it. Um, I have a second. Just don't look call. at the map while you're driving, please. Thank you. Second. May have a roll call, please. Yes. 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 I move resolution 180360 to award a contract to for to Midwest Construction for a curb and sidewalk program. So, second. Um, you have questions? Yeah, I just <laughs> well, I was just looking at it. I don't think I saw before right. sort of the uh, the breadth of the responses. Yes. In there, and I'm assuming that the engineer and the attorney 
because the low bidder is low. <laughs> Reviewed and signed off on everything. Just yep. Everything is in order. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That's right. why I said wow. Yeah. It's a big range from where he is. Just want to make sure he's covered everything. Have we used them? Wow. They've been approved by our by our attorney. I, I'm not sure if they've done work for us in the past. They have not. No. Doesn't look familiar. Yeah, it doesn't look familiar. I mean, I you know, I don't I assume that the engineer mm -hmm. is aware of them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, you can yeah. right there attached to it. Yep. Okay. There was a motion. I think okay, there was a second. Okay, we have a second. second. I second it. Okay. And may uh, roll call please. Yes. Mitchell? Yes. Mitchell? Yes. 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 Thank you. Um, where are we now? Under uh, Councilman Eugle. Councilman Eugle again. Uh, I'd like to, at this time, I'd like to move resolution 18 03 61, uh, awarding contract to EKA Associates for their grading and drainage plan for the train station. Second. Okay, may I have a roll call, please? Yes. 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 Okay. So, Eleanor, you're going to let them know that this has been approved tonight? Yes. Okay. And uh, last but not least, Councilwoman Barker. Um, yeah, I'd like to move a resolution 18 03 65 to award the contract to CME for Forest Road Park Phase 1 improvements. This will include um, surveying, permitting, designing, and bidding documents for the Forest Road Park project. S second, aka the big one. May I have a uh, roll call, please? Yes. 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 Thank you. May I have a motion to open the meeting to the public? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. May I call forward any members of the public that wish to come forward at this time? Seeing that there isn't any, may I have a motion to close the meeting to the public? I'll move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, what, one of the things that we forgot to mention earlier was is that our Congresswoman Bonnie Watson Coleman um, does mobile offices around her district and she will be coming her office will be coming to Fanwood on Tuesday March 27th so it'll be a week from tomorrow March 27th between the hours of 4 and 7 o'clock at the Fanwood Library um, the office will have people to come in to provide constituent services, an opportunity to speak with her staff for assistance with any concerns that they have. So we'll put this up on the um, website and we'll promote it over the next week or so, but it's always nice to have our Congresswoman and her staff come into town and talk to us. And um, one last thing is that we have Around town, you might be noticing work continuing on with Elizabethtown Gas um, with their pipeline replacement project. And so we know that they're going to be on Terrell Road uh, from LeGrand to Gear. We know they're going on to Park Avenue and North Martine Avenue and Scotch Plains and Fanwood. Um, and they're also going to be on sections of North Avenue. So that, again, all of those details will be up on our website. Um, and you can always feel free to call Borough Hall for any questions that you have. Um, with that, we'll go to any uh, council comments, and we'll start with Councilman Kranz. Uh Thanks, Mayor. Uh, we've got, if, if we're really going to have another four to eight inches of wet, heavy snow, which is what I read before I came in here tonight, I just wanted to remind everybody that um, we had a couple of incidents, close calls here in Fanwood with branches and limbs that fell down, in one case on a person, and in another case uh, a hot wire that fell down on one of our ambulances. Um, when, when the emails go out and they say, be careful, don't touch hot wires, it, they really mean that. And you can't, because unless you have 
a built-in electrical sensor, you can't tell whether the wire that's on the ground is a cable TV wire or an electrical wire. So um, it's, it sounds like a broken record, but it really is important that we teach not only our adults, but our kids to stay away from any wire that's dangling or that's down on the ground. Um, the rescue squad was actually, had just transported an individual who got hit by a branch um, from, back from Rahway uh, Hospital when on Lambert's Mill Road they heard a bang and suddenly a tree branch and a wire came down draped right across the hood of the ambulance. And they saw it sparking and it made an, an explosion. Uh, and they did the right thing which was they sat in the ambulance and waited 90 yes. minutes until PSENG got there and turned off the power. So it can happen. We've had, uh, we had an electrocution death a couple of years ago here under a similar circumstance and I just want to really emphasize to everybody be careful and take the warning seriously. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Carter. Thank you. <laughs> He's done. Okay. <laughs> okay. Not loquacious. Councilwoman. Okay. Um, I think I just want to um, continue my conversation from last month where uh, when I spoke about um, the killings of the students in Florida. Um, when I was watching TV last Wednesday when all the students were marching, I can't even begin to tell you how encouraged I was, how proud I was of these students who were marching and left school for 17 minutes. Um, they were articulate. They know what they're talking about. They spoke well. Um, and I was just so proud of them. Um, in several instances around the country when they were interviewing uh, students, some of them were not yet 18. Most of them were not yet 18, but some of them will be by uh, the time it comes to vote. And they made no bones about it that those who are not supporting some kind of gun legislation they will be voting them out of office. And um, I, I think our legislators uh, are useless legislators in many instances uh, uh, should heed their warning because they may not vote, but their parents do. Um, also, I think it is quite reprehensible that a, a, a neighboring town um, is going to reprimand, punish some of their 17, 24 students, I forget the exact many, how many there are, who uh, walked out and they are going to be reprimanded. So I, I, I just don't understand that at all. Um, I don't think 17 minutes out of school for any student is going to harm their education. Um, they cited the reason was safety but it seems to me that if all the other schools could do that in uh, coordination with their local police departments to keep the students safe, uh, I, I, there must be something wrong with that Board of Ed. Um, and on a much lighter note, happy spring. I think it's supposed to be coming. <laughs> but if there's going to be a snowstorm, it's a hard I'm pivot. Not sure. That was a happy hard. Easter. That was a 90 degree right <laughs> turn. Um, happy belated uh, St. Patrick's Day, and um, hope you all were safe. And uh, keep going to your local businesses like I did. That's it. Cheelands, of course. Um, I actually don't have much except enjoy the spring, I hope. Soccer and baseball are starting, so watch out for the kids that sometimes chase balls into the street. Um, I have nothing else. Thank you, Council. Uh, so I have two things tonight. Number one, about the students marching. I am proud of all the students in our district that participated in the, in the walkout. I think on the one hand, you can't lament the fact that uh, the young people are not involved, they don't know what's going on, and then on the other hand, criticize them for when they, when they do try to take part and participate in the world around them. Uh, the second thing that I have tonight is I'm here to tell you the truth about winter. So normally, we get about 10 to 12 weeks of winter, right? Mm -hmm. Nobody ever promised you that they were going to all be in a row. Right. Mm. So 
Thank you. That's, That's what right. I have. You're really. <laughs> Good night. Yeah. So, no, I can't. So I will say a nice happy <laughs> Easter and a happy Passover. Um, go out and buy your Girl Scout cookies if you haven't got them already. They're delicious um, and good for you. And with that, I'll take a motion to close the night's meeting. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good night.